Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about file deletion. In the previous video, we were actually talking about file creation so we can track and block the creation of certain files. On this one, we're going to be talking about what happens when the attacker decides like, hey, I created this file. Now I wanna remove it from the target system. So we have three different events that we can use. One of them is file delete event, which actually archives the file after it got deleted. So we have a copy of that file. Now we do have to be careful because it's safe into a secure location, but we do need to have a process to process all of those files that we're archiving. The other one's going to be file delete detected. That is the one that I actually recommend the most because it allows me to create baselines that I can then use. And also it's a bit safer and less friction in my environment when I use that one, because yeah, I don't run the risk of actually filling up the drive. Uh, the other one is going to be file block shredding, where I'm able to block what somebody actually tries to overwrite a file using sdelete, as we have seen actors like APT29 and others using their campaigns to hide copies of their files from forensics. So let's get started right now with file delete detection. So let's head over to the VM. So one of the first things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running an installation. I'm going to be preparing that archive folder ahead of time for when we discuss file delete. For that, I'm going to be doing sysmon minus I for installation, and then I'm going to be minus A for the archive folder, and I'm going to call it file backup. And that folder is going to be created on the C drive and it's going to actually be protected so only system is able to delete files inside of that folder or actually access that folder itself. So I'm going to create that, just got installed. Now we're going to start working with our file delete detected. This is going to be event ID number 26, what we're working here. And we're going to be setting up file delete detected as the element that we're going to be using for putting all of our filters and rules in. First one here is I'm just looking for executables, any type of executable. It has the ability of using the mini filter driver to look at the API calls for file deletion, and it will check before the file gets deleted if the file has an MC header. If the file has an MC header, that means that it is an executable file in Windows. So that's going to be OCX, DLL, Sys, executable, uh, XE, and some other file types. So this is awesome. I don't need to know the extensions. Now, this is going to be very noisy in a regular system as updates happen, as background updates happen. So I can actually use this as a general baseline and then I can just start adding more excludes and more excludes as I learn better my environment and the different behavior from the different applications. Another one is when we have script payloads, different types of scripts are actually used by attackers. Sometimes they may even place this specific scripts inside of other containers like ISOs and VHDX files. That's why we're also capturing some of those containers here in the case that somebody deletes this. Now, this is awesome because let's say that I have a media group that's working with DaVinci Resolve and every time you update DaVinci Resolve, you have a four gigabyte or five gigabyte file that gets downloaded. I don't want to have that SIP be part of that archive. I don't want to archive so much data. Same thing for ISOs, let's say by now my IT um, guy and I'm downloading, let's say Windows or I'm downloading Ubuntu and I delete that file. I don't want that to then be stored in that archive folder there for me. So in this case, I'm just doing detections and I'm just detecting every of the different deletions and then I'm able to track what is going on there. So let's apply this configuration right now. I'm going to be doing sysmon minus C, and then we're going to specify the name of the rule, which is file delete block detected, got applied. I can confirm sysmon minus C, there we go. Everything looks okay. Now, if I do an LS here, I have multiple executables. Um, on the desktop for this machine called Mimi SVC host. Uh, we have this one with a random name here. We have Chrome update. All of them are the same. They're a copy of Mimi cats. So let's do remove item. I'm going to delete Mimi.exe. Now let's take a look using the 
PS Compute at the event fields. Sysmon file delete event. And here you can see sys we captured this on the rule for executable. So it identified that it was a PE file. Now we're going to get is executable true hash. What is the hash of that file that got deleted, which is awesome because then I can use this hash against threat intelligence, or I can use other services out there to be able to check if this file is malicious or not. So I'm able to track who deleted this file under what context of what user, what is their process GUID that actually deleted that file. And I'm able to track this behavior. Now, this is awesome. Now what happens? If I want to now capture this, I'm going to be using file delete, which is going to be for event ID number 23. Now this one, I have to be careful. As I mentioned, I can fill up the drive and also it's, yeah, it's one where I, I do have to be honest. If you ask me my recommendation for file delete on desktops, be careful because it's going to be hard to normalize all of that data. You need to establish a process where I'm going to go into that folder and check what is the size of those folders. Am I archiving too much? Or I have a process where I'm taking all of that over and sending over to a share. Also, I may run into the complications that there may be confidential data. If I'm looking, let's say for ISOs, DOCM, or any other file that may contain sensitive data, PII data, and we have to look at the retention rules and how do we handle all of that. That's why this is one of those that normally I recommend for servers. And also if you're targeting specific files, uh, where you have gone through the entire process of going through an entire tabletop exercise, uh, trust is this is something that you can do with our good friends from the purple team, Andrew Schwartz and 10, uh, Leo and the other guys, they're, they're going to help you work on those detections and how to tailor them for your environment. They'll go with you through tabletop exercises as part of our purple team services to be able to guarantee that you're not capturing way too much information or even sensitive information that may be dangerous to then place in other places. So let's take a back a look at the configuration file itself. Now that we're here, this is a very open one. Normally I would not do ISO, MSI. I'm just going by some of the recommendations from Sysmon Modular. But as I mentioned, this is something that you have to baseline. Don't go over by any recommendations of mine. Look for this specific type, this other specific type. For example, SVC host actually downloads quite a bit of updates. Clean Manager does the same and some other files, uh, executables in the system may be doing this in the background also. So we need to be careful with this and then deleting those. So let's apply right now. Let me clear my configuration. In fact, probably since I have Firefox and Chrome open the background, probably got some additional file deletions there. So let's take a look again here. Yep, we got a couple here. Yep, we got Firefox. So here you can start seeing some of those false positives for .bin. Also I have .js that were created by Firefox and we already looking and targeting this. So this would be stuff that would actually get archived into that folder if we're not careful. And with time, we would fill out the drive. So let me clear that configuration right now. Let me apply the new configuration. Call delete. And I'm going to specify the folder for this, which is going to be here in archive directory, file temp. I think it was file backup, the one that we use. In fact, let me check in my history here. Yep, file backup. Make sure I get the correct case and everything. Let's apply now. I'll delete, we applied it, just my minus C to confirm. Everything looks okay. Remove item. And then I'm going to be doing the SVC host copy of Mimikatz here. Now let's use PS Gumshoot to take a look.
Let's take a look here at the event, event ID number 23. We can see that it archive equals true. Is it executable? Yes. And we also see the hash. So we can see that this file was actually, the, this is the name that is going to be used there. Uh, we see that also we archived some stuff here for uh, Firefox. As I mentioned, this rule is a bit too open. So it's going to be capturing stuff that it should not be capturing and then archiving that data. Now, where does all of this get archived? Well, we specify the name of the folder that's going to be in our C drive. So if I do get child item, C, and then I do force, so it will show hidden files. Here you can see my file backup folder. If I go over here and I go into my C drive, I have it so it will actually show me hidden files. And as you can see, I cannot see that folder, so it's completely hidden. So let's take a look at the permissions for it. Get ACL. File backup and let's then do format list. And one of the things that you're going to notice is that, hey, only system has full control. System is the owner and also the group is for system. So nobody else has access to this folder. If let's do PSXSEC minus S minus I, minus I PowerShell.exe. I navigate to that folder now since I'm system. And I look at the files here. You can see that actually I even capture a PS and one PS one file, the bin from Firefox. Here's the exe, and we can see the hash. That's the name of that file. So all of that stuff is right now archived on the system, and then I can just retrieve that information. But as I mentioned, this is something where you need to have a process already done when you implement this specific event, and you need to be careful not to fill up the drive. So you do need to do tabletop exercises and create a very good baseline. That's why I was actually covering file delete detected first. Now let's look at when somebody tries to shred a file or tries to completely remove a file from disk. So let's go over to that event. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at file block shredding. So what we're going to be setting up is here a very simple configuration. Uh, now, before we have been using is executable and that has worked very well. In my experience, it doesn't work with this event type. If we try to use that Boolean value, I don't know if it is a timing event, a race event or something, but it doesn't work for me. Now, when I include, let's say for this example, target file name, desktop, downloads, app data, I include paths or I include extensions or I have exclusion rules and everything set up, as long as I don't use is executable, it works. As soon as I use is executable as one of my values, it doesn't. So do be aware of that specific use case when you're dealing with this. So right now here is target file name, desktop downloads, app data. So I'm looking for any file that is being deleted in those locations. Right now here, I'm in my desktop. If I look here, I have Google Group Chrome update still as a Mimikatz copy. So let's apply that configuration, sysmon minus C file block shred. Apply the configuration, sysmon minus C, I'm confirming my configuration and it looks good. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using sdelete against Google Chrome update.exe. And here we can see that I got an error this delete wasn't able to delete this file. So if I go right now, and I do get sysmon file block shredding. And I look here, I have my event number 28. So it appears that it tried to do this twice on the file itself. I got what was the path of the image that tried to do this. In this case, it was sdelete, but it's installed in my machine. In addition to that, you see the hash of the file that we tried to delete in case that they do something else and they just run a regular delete on it or they try to run any other type of 
program. They say like, hey, something blocked this, blocked our action. They start looking, they see Sysmon, they delete it. But if we're shipping our locks over to a centralized place, we're going to be able to track this type of attack. And as I mentioned, everything is under event ID number 28. Now, as you saw, Sysmon is pretty useful for tracking deletion of files. Now, that, as you also saw, there are some caveats there. We're saving quite a bit of information if we use file delete with archive. We need to have a process of actually grabbing all of those deleted files, pulling them out of the system. We also should check very well our rules that we're not capturing data that has PII. We do need to take into consideration quite a bit there. That's why we would use file delete detection to create that initial baseline, get our situational awareness in our environment, the different configurations, different applications, what are their behaviors when it comes to executables. And then we use all of that information to then decide how are we going to do file delete. Then we're all going to take a look at, okay, am I going to be protecting from somebody shredding a file? Am I a target of APT29 or any other actor? Do I have threat intel that tells me, hey, this is a known behavior of attackers that are attacking me? Or I may just go, hey, I'm going to do it just in case. I'd rather do it and just uh, be careful on that side and have my coverage for that specific technique. Now, when we do that, there may be some false positives. I've seen Firefox delete files that look as if it is trying to shred something. Uh, same thing with the Microsoft Windows Defender engine. Uh, it, it deletes a bean file that looks like that. I've seen Git actually trigger as it is shredding a file. So my recommendation there is if you deploy it in your environment, at the very least, monitor that event and start implementing rules for exclusion of those applications because we don't want to break stuff. We don't want to leave data and leave applications in a bad state. Again, it's something like everything with Sysmon, we have to test, we have to monitor, and we have to constantly be updating our configuration. So it is not a copy paste out from the internet and now we're able to run this. Okay, guys, I think this video has been long enough. Um, yeah, I hope that you found the information useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.